What's going on everyone? Welcome to another episode of If There's a Will, There's a Wave. If you follow along with the series, welcome back, and if you're new, welcome aboard. We're restoring this 1973 32-foot Lord's Flybridge Sportfisher that's been sitting for what's seemingly more than two years. Yeah, it's time to get worse the further down you go. <laughs> In this episode, we pick up with part two of the 12-volt upgrade mini-series. We finish the battery monitor install and get the two engine shutoffs connected and in place. You're gonna wanna stick around for the results. Let's get into it. The plan is to go ahead and uh, we're gonna tape all these wires together so I can try to snake it into the bilge and get inside the cabin. So we'll see how it goes. Are you messing up my shot? Nah, you're enhancing it. What am I saying? Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm working it. Huh? I said I'm working here. I want to try to keep everything as tight as possible. Okay. Each individual strand, that's what you're going to want to do. Just so that they don't get caught on any other wires and stuff. You essentially want to make one solid, one solid rope of wire. And there's that. We got everything all together as one piece. We're going to do our best to not get it tangled. Feed it through. Okay, we're feeding it through. Just believe me when I tell you this. Believe me when I tell you. That's all you're gonna model. Okay, so we got all the wire in this little slot. If you can imagine that there is a channel wall here and a wall there. So we got it all in this channel. And I got the wire ready to be pulled on right here, okay? So now what I'm thinking is I'm probably going to have to find some sort of stick or maybe even tape measure. Light bulb. That's flexible but also sturdy that I'll be able to push into this area where I can see. I'll attach that wire to it and then uh, we'll pull it through. Okay. So let me set that up. So for us to do this, uh, I'm going to have to pull off this panel, this four piece, so that I can uh, get access to the bilge. Relax, Cleo. It's not the easiest thing to do, but <laughs> it's definitely possible. All right, so to do this, yeah, I can already see the path. It went through. Excuse me. Watch out. I can see it. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. You got it. So, tape measure is there. I basically just measured, made sure that it was long enough to reach into the engine bay from where I was standing. And then, pushed it on through. There it is. You guys see it? Boom. Okay, that's how it looks like, all right? That's what we're pulling through. Hopefully, it does not separate. But uh, let's do this. No crying. Okay, good news. We have officially completed the task. So yeah, uh, this is just temporary for now. Uh, it's a little late for me to do the rest of what I wanted to do. But as of right now, 12.7 volts for the starboard battery, 12.8. For the 12 volt system that's connected to this inverter, it's at 13.5. And then we got the port side engine at 12.7. So these are both pretty much at the same level. They are separate from each other, 
um, and they're holding their charge, so beautiful. They might end up over here somewhere, but I'm thinking for now, especially while I'm testing stuff, um, in here is perfectly fine. So probably we'll build some sort of little wooden board that will go in this section over here where I can just pop these guys in. And then we'll also clean up this, uh, all this wiring mess. We'll use zip ties and all that. And then over here, this is the backboard that the previous shutoff switches were on. And it's a little bit uh, too big of a hole for the new ones that I got. Uh, will be something else that we add to the list. We'll be getting some new uh, wood pieces to go behind there. And we'll be finishing the connection of these batteries. Until then, I'll see you guys tomorrow, which is right now. What's up, guys? It's the morning. I told you. Did it work? Hope it did. Uh, today, well, I'll just show you what we're doing. Now we got to work on some uh, little like wooden slabs to put the shutoff switches onto. All right, so I got the original ones for the giant, you know, radial switches that were there before. Now we've kind of upgraded to some smaller ones, same, you know, situation, same uh, one, two, one, two, or both of those together, or you have everything completely shut off. So that's actually a really good thing. I'll show you a little picture of how it looks right here. As of last night, I hooked up the new ones. They're just, they're floating with the wires, but this is basically that back plate so you can kind of get an idea of how big it is, right? And so, the original one is, it's the hole was too big, so I had to make a new piece, okay? Uh, there's no way to mount this unless I put like a backboard here, but then yeah, wires, it's, and it's not gonna look clean. So we'll be using this piece of wood here. We're gonna go ahead and stain this piece, and then we'll add some polyurethane, you know, like a nice clear semi-gloss that will not only look good, but it'll also add as a additional barrier against that water. So what we're gonna do here is just kind of measure out a nice piece of wood that we know will be the right size. And this can be, you know, a rough cut. Uh, it doesn't need to be necessarily exact, but I'm gonna measure this out and have two equal lengths and uh, we'll get it done. You're a good girl. Yes, yes, you're a good girl. You're a good girl. Yeah. Not bad. I mean, one, it was almost eight. It was almost eight inches, so um, I just cut it at four. <laughs> That's done. Uh, I'm gonna stain these things, and then we will cut some holes in them. Actually, let's cut the holes in them now, and then we'll stain them. So we're gonna go ahead and cut two holes in these pieces of wood here, so that way we have all the cuts done before it's stained, and we can get you know the stain all in between those areas. So let's just get into it. Sit for a little bit. Air out. 
I'm just gonna have to pour it on there. I don't have a uh, paintbrush at the moment, so so be it. Let's go. the bad side. <laughs> These guys are pretty dry now. They don't look bad at all, huh? Look at that sheen. You guys saw I was gonna come out crappy. <laughs> you thought! I love the smell of stained wood. Freshly stained wood. I'm gonna go ahead and mount these pieces first. Mount these blocks on. Everybody. So here's how we're looking. This is the final product. We got them both put in. Both of them stained, both of them with the gloss, with that polyurethane covering. Let's go ahead and power them on. Just like that. So this is that live wire going into two. We have one and two if we want to put these two together, and then we have the off on the bottom. This right here is going to be our, eventually our auxiliary power. I already got a wire running, and then it's just going tucked into this uh, box down here. So, not touching anything, not an issue. And if we look on this side, same deal. We got power coming on one on this side, so we'll go ahead and turn on number one. And now this wire is live and this whole panel is all lit up okay so now let's go and check the voltage on those monitors that we installed last night let's see the good thing is that they're all backlit so we'd be able to see these at night all right so we're reading 12.7 for the starboard engine reading 13.6 for the house battery and 12.7 for the port side battery. So cool, these guys are both equal, and then the one in the middle should be charging. We lost one volt there, or one point of a volt. So, a tenth of a volt, <laughs> no big deal. I do plan to clean up this wiring, I just need to really decide what the plan is uh, moving forward with these guys, so. Hey, I love you. Thanks for watching, I'll see you soon. That's going to wrap it up for part two of the 12 volt upgrade mini series. Stay tuned for part three where we'll go in depth with the wiring for these engine shutoffs as well as finish the install of the master house battery cutoff switch. See you next week.